Isekai has been a rampant setting for anime for the past decade or so. It is used so much that the Isekai setting could have been a genre of itself. But despite that, most of the Isekai anime aired are arguably subpar or even bad. Which is why when Isekai comes up on a new release chart, it is often ignored or skipped almost immediately. Which leads to the making of this video. So in my opinion, Isekai anime are missing some points that could have made these types of anime better. I think Isekai anime should follow three rules. The first one I want to talk about is the connection between the main character and the other world. There should be two possible interactions between the main character and the other world. One best possible interaction is the main character should be adapting to the other world. This would result in the best setup possible for main character development. The other possible interaction is that the main character should influence the other world and change that world following the main character. While this mostly works, it however is a shaky foundation for an isekai story, since the one developing is the world instead of the main character. Take for example, High school prodigies have it easy even in another world. This anime have 7 characters being transported to another world. The hook of this anime is that they are prodigies from their original world, and they use their ability as a prodigy to basically prevail in that other world. So the second interaction is at work here, but the problem lies when the anime completely forgot about the main character's backstory while also forgot to tell a large portion of the other world's story. The only exception for this is the engineering girl, Ringo Ohoshi, where she got a complete backstory set up for her contribution to the overarching story. The problem with not knowing the main character's backstory is that the other world is supposed to follow an example being the main character. They don't have a foundation to build a story and develop on, and also for an anime that decides to tackle 7 main characters, they don't bother to make them compelling or at least likable at all. So speaking of characters, the second rule that isekai anime should follow in my opinion is that the characters introduced should be relevant to the main story. This is actually a rule of thumb for any written story, but it's a prevalent problem for isekai anime because of the setting that they're set on. Most of the characters in isekai anime tend to just be a tool to introduce the other world they live in. Take for example, Genja no Mago. This anime is very subpar when it comes to isekai story. First, they introduce a lot of characters in the opening episodes including the main character's father figure and family. However, they exist as a tool to introduce the world, and nothing more. In Kenja no Mago, even the most revered person, the wise man in that world, is irrelevant. Another grab of mine with Kenja no Mago is that the story will not laser focus on the main story, which leads to the next rule that I think should be important to isekai anime. I think isekai anime should laser focus on the main overarching story and have less filler as possible. And again, this is not restricted to isekai anime only, but the effect when it fails is more severe than other genre of anime, since isekai's main hook is being transported to another world, the story should laser focus on getting to know about the world and the system. Back to Kenja no Mago, as an example, the anime will leave the main story hanging for some filler side story, where the anime became a slice of life story instead of a fantasy adventure, which it should have been in the first place. All in all, these three rules are the points that I want to bring up in this video, which leads to the one isekai anime that I want to promote to you guys. I think. 
that. Mushoku Tensei completely succeeded in all of these rules. Let me explain. The main character is flawed in every way possible, but with him reincarnating to another world, he started a development following the approach of the main character adapting to the new world, Rudeus was a scum of the earth, seeing women as just a pleasure sight. But with the new life he had, he started to see women as also human beings. And it shows. Not just that, but he also started to trust other people, whereas he in his old world did not trust anybody, due to him being bullied. This is character development. It is a simple way of writing a good character development story, yet effective. I think most of isekai animes tend to take a power fantasy route over this, but forgets completely on how to make a good and compelling story. Not only Rudeus, but every single character introduced in Mushoku Tensei is relevant and apparently important to the overarching story. And each character's story are not half as either. I remember Rudio's father, Paul, because he is relevant in the story somewhere in the middle. I also remember Lilia, who was just Rudio's mate back when he was still young, because later in the story she is also relevant to Rudio's adventure, which is amazing, because none of the characters here are being set aside and fall off relevance. On top of being just relevant, I can't believe how good and believable all the cast are. I think it needless to say how amazing Roxy and Eris as a character, even Richard as a character is so intriguing I can talk all day. And not only that, but the story of Mushoku Tensei does not sway away from the main point of the story. The whole story of Mushoku Tensei is the adventure that Rudeus have to go through, and the story is explored really well. Through and through, the story never sways to some generic slice of life shenanigans either. Unlike Kenja no Mago, again, as an example, Kenja no Mago is about the main character expelling evil around him and the city. But it fails when after they introduce the main antagonist of the story, they somehow completely forget about him for the rest of the anime in favor of just slice of life fan service, It doesn't know what it wants to be. Which is why I keep contrasting these isekai animes with Mushoku Tensei. Mushoku Tensei doesn't turn around from what it wants to be. Mushoku Tensei wants to be an adventure story, so it tells you an adventure story. With that being said, plus the rules that I've been saying, Mushoku Tensei, in my opinion, is a quintessential example of a perfect isekai story.